Hello and welcome to Monday 6-1 live from Galway. The headlines this evening. Plastic pollution. Researchers at NUI Galway discover one of the highest fish contamination levels in the world. Out of the 233 fish we collected, 73% had microplastics in their stomachs. And another news called... We're in Galway on board the Celtic Explorer Marine Research Vessel this evening. We're going to be hearing more about a research study undertaken by researchers at NUI Galway in the level of plastics contaminating our marine life. Scientists sampled fish living at quite extreme depths in the northwestern Atlantic and yet found that more than 70% of them had ingested microplastic particles. This is one of the highest contamination levels of fish found anywhere in the world. In the first of tonight's reports, we'll go Goodbody, our science and technology correspondent, explains the research. Discarded rubbish, clothing fibres washed down the drain, microbeads from beauty products. Our oceans are awash with vast quantities of plastic that's damaging marine life. This research was conducted during a transatlantic crossing by the Marine Institute's vessel Celtic Explorer. The scientists recovered 233 dead deep sea fish by trawling depths of up to 600 metres in the northwest Atlantic. The stomachs of 73% contained microplastics, among the highest levels ever recorded in fish anywhere. Most of the microplastics were fibres in shape and we're not 100% sure yet uh, where they're originating from. We can see that uh, fibres shed from clothing during washing, so that could be one of the sources. Or maybe a fishing gear which has been left in the ocean, but more studies are needed. The researchers say that these fish may have come from a particularly polluted part of the Atlantic Ocean where circular currents lead to an accumulation of plastics. But nonetheless they say the findings are worrying, not only because it shows that fish are ingesting these substances, but also that they're doing it hundreds of kilometres from shore and at great depths. We know microplastics cause internal damage to marine life, but what we don't yet know is whether toxicity in plastic can be passed up the food chain. Some of these microplastics actually can have contaminants on their surface. So if they get into the animal or into any of us, they could cause a hazard. Um, so the question then is, what kind of plastic is it? How does it get into the organism and how it distributes itself through the tissues? Environmentalists say it's time for action. We have two bills potentially that could go through this year, the Waste Reduction Bill, which would create a deposit and return scheme and uh, a levy on single-use plastic. And we also have a commitment from the government that they will pass a bill to address microplastic pollution this year. So we have an opportunity to lead. The government says it's proceeding with that plan to ban microbeads, but is awaiting EU approval, while the Waste Reduction Bill is currently being considered by an Oireachtas committee. Action, it seems, is increasing. But so too is the environmental damage caused by our waste. Will the body RTE News. Well, for more on this, I'm joined now by our environment correspondent, George Lee. George, this is one study, a very disturbing study, you'd have to say, at such depth to have found this level of plastic. You've been looking at the wider picture, though, of the level of plastic pollution worldwide. What can you tell us? Well, it's particularly bad. It, it, the plastic pollution has appeared now in the pristine waters in the Arctic uh, and all over the world. It looks like um, it is becoming a huge, huge issue of concern. Uh, they're saying of the order of uh, 8 million tonnes of plastic is dumped into the oceans each year. A lot of it comes from washing your clothes and so on and so the difficulty there is how to stop any of that and where, is it, where exactly is it coming from. I think in Ireland the whole issue is that it is definitely on the agenda in terms of dealing with it, particularly the issue of microbeads. Thank you very much indeed for that. Now we will have more from Galway later. We'll be speaking to the uh, chief researcher behind the study but for now it's back to you Katrina in studio. Well Coastwatch have said that this new research highlights the need for a bottled retention scheme. They say that uh, more action must now be taken to encourage plastic recycling and to start reducing plastic waste. Diane Connor has this report. Collecting rubbish on the beach, items that are potentially lethal for marine life, a bottle deposit system is seen as one way to help reduce plastic waste. People b value the empty container. They buy it with a deposit, like an extra fee, and then when they finish drinking it, they bring it back to any shop which sells that type of container and they get the full deposit back. 
Ireland tops the Eurostat list when it comes to producing plastic waste. Many consumers surprised at just how much they are accumulating. Vegetables, they all, they, they've all come pre-packaged. Um, carrots and shallots, but the shallots are just in a net, so I don't think that's too bad. Um, and then the water. So we go through an awful lot of water. Supermarkets are being urged to do more to reduce packaging. Some retailers are already leading the way. I've driven by a number of supermarkets today to come here because they give paper bags. I think if uh, consumers act, retailers will act. I would always try to buy things loose. We would go for the carts, buy them a few by quantity, so we use them as we need them, so we never buy too much. We always try to get as much loose produce as possible. Um, the only reason we'd stock it that it's packaged is if it's superior quality and you can't get it loose. So they come in from Europe and they're already packaged like this. Um, and I suppose if anything's going to change, it has to change at a European level as well. In Galway, we're finding a lot of this. Environmentalists say the need for action to address our waste problem is now urgent in light of the research finding that 73% of deep sea fish in the northwest Atlantic had ingested microplastic particles. So the waste may be generated on land, but this research is evidence that its effects are felt far from our shores, hundreds if not thousands of kilometres away. Diane Connor, RTE News. Well, for more on plastic uh, waste and indeed the ingestion of microplastic by deep sea fish, I'm joined now by Alina Vikoric. Uh, Alina, you were the chief uh, researcher on this new study, the new research published today. I'm also joined by Gary Candelan of Clean Coast Galway. Thank you both very much indeed for joining us here on the uh, Celtic Explorer. Alina, first of all, as researcher, you obviously set out to answer a question. Were you surprised by the answer you got? Were you surprised at the levels of plastic you found? Given that these fish inhabit a very remote island, um, area in, in the north of West Atlantic Ocean and that they're deep sea fish, we're quite surprised to see such high levels of microplastics in the gut contents of the fish. And what are the implications of that? I mean, what does it mean for the way in which microplastics are circulating in our oceans? It just means that the plastics are getting transported even to the most remote areas by ocean currents and that the organisms they are um, affected by these plastics. And I suppose a lot of people will be looking at this and going, well, does this mean we should start uh, stop eating fish? But it's not actually about the food chain, really, is it? It's more about our pollution levels. Yeah, so these fish, they're not used for human consumption, but this study just shows you how, how this pollution, how our everyday activities and littering uh, can, can impact uh, or can add to the pollution in, in the sea. Yeah, and deep water fish. The other issue that has come out of this is that it would appear that much of the, the microplastics you found have to do with the way in which we wash our clothes. Yeah, so the microplastics we found are mostly fibres in shape. So uh, there have been some studies showing that these fibres originate from the shedding of synthetic clothes during washing and these enter the seas through wastewater efforts. And what can be done about that? Well, Ireland together with Sweden and Norway are now working on a project, uh, an engineering solution to treat wastewaters. Oh, so at the kind of the, the waste treatment plants yeah, rather than in our washing machines? The or? key thing is to get, uh, to stop plastics from entering the sea. Okay, now Gary, you're also working on this, I suppose at a different level, you've been working at the, the micro level, you're at the macro level. What are you doing here in Galway? Yeah, so in the fight against marine litter, uh, through the Clean Coast program, uh, over 500 groups have been established all around the Irish coastline and they adopt a, a beach and what they do is they bring volunteers together to clean up the beach. And what are you finding in terms of discarded plastics? Yeah, so typically uh, on number one on the list is uh, plastic uh, water bottles and uh, the cotton earbuds, but there's also a lot of sanitary items being flushed down the toilet. So we support the Think Before You Flush campaign, which tries to change human behaviour in to not to use the, the toilet as a, as a bin. Okay, so dispose of them in, in some other way. Yeah. But in terms of the increase in the number of plastics you're seeing um, as you go out cleaning up beaches, how has that been? Yeah, well, I suppose we, we would be on the beach now for the last five years. And I tell you the truth, it's always been the same uh, over the last few years. It has increased, of course, but it's, it's always more or less the same levels, more or less the same amounts. We usually typically will take away five or six bags of litter from Grattan Beach every beach clean. 
Brian, what would you be looking for the government to do at this point in terms of measures to reduce plastic waste? Yeah, well, I think there's lots of options with compostable products to support compostable products and actually to support people in educating uh, Voice Ireland to do the education around what can be recycled. Because even though we do have uh, recycled bins, I still feel that people are not sure what, what, what should go into each different bin. So there definitely needs to be more education and Voice Ireland are very good for providing that information. Okay, and to go back, I suppose, to the micro level, Alina, I mean, just put it in context, how far away were the fish from this shore that you found this, these levels of plastics in? The fish were collected off the Newfoundland cows, so that's several thousand kilometres away from, from land. And also the nets were, were shot down to depths up to 600 metres. So that's, the fish were caught at 600 metres depth. So these fish really were in very remote locations? It was a very remote area, yeah. And was it an area that ocean currents would necessarily be transporting waste to, or was it a fairly pristine area? So there's an, an eddy current there uh, where we sampled, which is like a whirlpool circular current, and there's been no, some suggestions that these circular currents, similar to ocean dryers, like the South Pacific Garbage Patch, uh, would accumulate uh, microplastics. Okay, so so it, those currents could be a part of the, the reason they for having be, plants yeah, and again, plastics Again, further there. research is needed to confirm that they do, but uh, there's some suggestions out there. Okay, well, Alina, Gary, thank you both very much indeed for joining us here on the Celtic Explorer. And we will have more from the ship uh, a little later on in the programme. We're going to be shown around the bowels of the ship, if you like. But for now, it's back to you, Katrina. Well, we're returning to our main story tonight, that is the research from NUI Galway, which has found that more than 70% of the fish that they sampled at extreme depths in the northwest Atlantic had ingested particles of microplastics. Well, that research was conducted on board this vessel, the Celtic Explorer, and a little earlier on, its manager of research operations, Aidan Fitzgerald, took me on a tour of the vessel to see how it does its job. Well, the ship works about 320 days a year at sea. So this is the bridge of the ship, so you can see all the, the electronic navigation equipment there. So the ship operates 24-7, so this is where it's manned, steered from, and uh, put in the right position for the work that needs to be done. Well, we're here in the dry lab now, so this is where all the data is acquired in the ship. This, is, this some, is interesting, isn't it? Yeah, this is some work we did over the past couple of years when we were doing Atlantic Transex. So this is actually an image of a newly mapped mountain range out in the middle, about 600 miles west of Galway in the Charlie Gibbs Fracture Zone. And when you say newly mapped, did nobody know that existed before you found it? They only had vague ideas about its existence, but this is where the first time it's been mapped in actual real detail. So you can see it's almost uh, 2,000 metres high, so it's a couple of times higher than Caron Tuhul, yeah. So this is the first time it's been imaged properly. So how many would be on board the ship at any one time? Uh, up to 35 people in total, so we'd have 15 crew and uh, about 20 scientists on board at any one time. It's very busy today. What's, what's going on in the ship? Yeah, it's extremely busy. We're getting ready for the next survey, which is a, a monkfish and megram survey. So this is the wet lab where all the, the fisheries work is done. When is this next mission actually heading out? The guys are leaving at 5.30 in the morning. 5.30? Okay, yeah. so there really is uh, last minute preparations going Absolutely, on here. So yeah. the fish come in, they're brought along here, and what, counted, sorted, whatever you want to yeah, say about them? Yeah, they're sorted into different species, and they're aged, measured, weighed, and this is all part of setting the, the stocks for, for, for fish in Irish waters. So let me show you one of the key tools we have for studying the deep ocean. This is a CTD. It measures, basically, it measures temperature and salinity down all the way down to about over five kilometers down five kilometers five, yeah so where's the the wire that allows yeah, this wire here is about six and a half uh, kilometers long so we, this is used to lower this unit down all the way down to the, to the to the water column and as we see things of particular interest we can use use these bottles here to store the the water sample and bring it to the surface well, a look at the main news again this evening. A team at NUI Galway has found that fish that they sampled in the northwest Atlantic, they found that more than 70% of those deepwater fish had ingested particles of microplastics. Well, that is it from the 6-1 news for this evening. So from all of the team here in Galway and from the team in Dublin, good night and thank you for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow.